Paris, France, 1949, when Simone de Beauvoir's soon-to-be revolutionary book, The Second Sex, was first released to the French public, instantly opening people's eyes to truths about their current reality which had been previously unexplored. The release of her book allowed French writer, philosopher, and women's rights activist Simone de Beauvoir to step into the spotlight. Soon, her book was being discussed and analyzed by thousands of people, allowing her ideas to spread rapidly amongst the French population. On the cover of the book are the words, the first manifesto of the liberated woman, and on the inside are pages upon pages of ideas exploring what it truly means to be a woman. The second sex is an analysis of gender inequality. Within it, de Beauvoir establishes the many restrictions that women face in society. She sheds light on the fact that women are physically, economically, socially, and intellectually confined. By illuminating the gender barrier that exists between men and women in society, Simone de Beauvoir reached a turning point in her life. In France, reached a turning point in its history. A turn away from female oppression and towards women's liberation. In order to truly analyze the extent of Simone de Beauvoir's life, one must go back to the start. Simone was born into a bourgeois Parisian family in 1908. From a young age, her father instilled in her a strong love for literature, which clearly resonated with Simone. In her youth, she was particularly influenced by uh, American women authors like uh, Louisa May Alcott, Catherine Mansfield. So she's reading these uh, authors, teaching herself English, but she's also... I think inspired by the idea, for example, in Little Women, of a woman who wants to become an author. Simone was a bright young child, so much so that her father used to say to her, you have the brain of a man. As Simone began to see the great flaw in these words, feminist ideals sparked inside her head. Ideals that would eventually manifest within her many literary works. In 1926, Simone began her studies of philosophy at Sorbonne University, where she quickly rose to the top of her class. Two years later, Simone received certificates in psychology, sociology, and ethics. At this time, she was only the ninth woman with a degree from Sorbonne. Philosophy to this day is a discipline that has the least number of women than any other discipline. So there were barely any women philosophers when Beauvoir was trained in, in 1929. And she was actually the seventh woman in all of France to receive her degree in philosophy. After completing her thesis in 1929, Simone de Beauvoir placed second on the philosophy aggregation test. In first place was a man by the name of Jean-Paul Sartre. He eventually became one of the most prominent male figures in her life. De Beauvoir and Sartre shared an extremely intellectual relationship, which shaped both of their philosophical beliefs. During the 1930s, Simone de Beauvoir worked throughout different parts of France, teaching philosophy and literature, but was removed from her post by the Vichy government in 1941, after the German occupation of France during World War II. Throughout the remainder of the Second World War, de Beauvoir, along with Sartre, worked in the French resistance, which fought against the Nazi and the Vichy regime. At this time, women made up only 15% of the French resistance. In 1943, de Beauvoir launched her literary career with her debut novel, She Came to Stay, which earned her some well-deserved recognition as an author. Six years later came the publication of The Second Sex, the iconic book which serves as a critique of the patriarchy and an in-depth analysis of female oppression and liberation. Though The Second Sex has now become one of the most important feminist works in history, when it was first released to the public, it was not met with unanimous acceptance. Instead, 
The book was received with immense controversy. At first, the book was heavily criticized and ridiculed, and even landed a spot on the Vatican's list of forbidden texts, where it still remains to this day. And you might say the response to the publication was really reflective of all the barriers that women had to face then and, and still have to face, but not as much, right. uh, to be taken seriously. Throughout the next few years, Simone released a number of literary works that allowed her platform as a writer to continue to expand. Simone's grand contributions to the fields of philosophy and literature allowed her to break an intellectual barrier. Rather than writing a treatise or an essay about why women should have rights, she shows us women's own experiences. And that's something that in a sexist society is not normally given voice to. Women's experiences of themselves are actually silenced. And so to express women's experiences from women's points of view is actually a radical act that can show people a different reality and point to ways that the world can be changed. By the 1960s, Beauvoir had transformed into a highly acclaimed writer and philosopher whose feminist ideas were quickly changing society. In fact, the second sex has actually been credited for the start of the second wave of feminism. This new wave of feminism, pioneered by Simone de Beauvoir, was a revaluation of women's role in society. This new era brought about the birth of the women's liberation movement, which advocated for women's sexual freedom, access to contraceptives, and right to abort, all topics that de Beauvoir was extremely passionate about. Though her main contributions were through lectures and essays, Simone also participated in multiple demonstrations where thousands of women came together to fight for their rights. After years of pointing out the many flaws in the broken societal system and fighting towards a way to correct them, Simone de Beauvoir, though not alone, achieved one thing she truly saw. In 1971, de Beauvoir signed the Manifesto for 343, in which more than 300 women confessed to having had an abortion. That was an extremely courageous thing for those women to do, because abortion was illegal in France at the time. So they, they signed their name saying they committed a crime. Thankfully, however, their efforts were not in vain, because in 1975, abortion became legalized in France. This monumental moment in women's history was due to the collective actions of de Beauvoir and many others, such as Simone Veil. Here lies another barrier broken in part by de Beauvoir. During her later years, Simone published multiple works regarding the concepts of old age and death. In fact, one specific quote has hence become extremely well known. Simone de Beauvoir died at 78 years old on April 14, 1986. Years after her death, her legacy lives on. She's still read all the time today and there's a lot of books coming out about her there's many biographies so even if people aren't reading the second sex itself they're reading her novels they're reading um, other texts as well the battle for gender equality continues to be fought by women today who demand ultimate liberation these women who participate in movements like the women's march on paris walk in the footsteps of simone de beauvoir Ultimately, her power lies in her literature, and her words form undeniable truths, like the one she establishes in saying that one is not born, but rather becomes a woman.